Welcome to God of Rest. This is Will Sanchez. Our special guest today is Deborah Warner. She is the founder and the president of the Mile High Run Club right here in New York City. I first heard about this club when I was invited by coach Terrence Gershberg to try out a charity event hosted by Scott Jarek. I said, wow, this charity event supported the back of my feet, a wonderful organization that helped people that are experiencing hopelessness to get back on their feet. I'm thrilled to have Deborah at the Gotta Run TV show. Hi, Will. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure. Let's get started, as I usually do, by introducing yourself to our audience. For example, where were you born? Tell us a little bit about your childhood. Okay, I was born in western New York State, uh, south of Buffalo. Uh, it's a town called Jamestown, New York. Were you very active as a child? I was on swim team in high school. So that was my gateway sport. <laughs> <laughs> Swimming. Oh, okay. Yeah. Did you go off to college? I did. I've always did to study there. I studied art. Yeah, conte I, um, painting. So I received a Bachelor of Fine Art. From what school? Uh, I bounced around quite a bit. Three, I went to three different schools, and I, I ended up at, at Empire State College in New York okay. uh, with a studio on the Lower East Side. Um, and I... Uh, started my art career shortly after. Great. Yeah. Well, how, how did that go, your art career? <laughs> did, you, did you have a... Uh... I, I had a real art career, yeah, uh -huh. I had uh, as a contemporary artist, um, initially uh, audio-based work, and then I transitioned to sculpture, diff different media, painting. I had three solo exhibitions in New York, uh, one solo in Japan, and uh, one solo in Berlin and several, um, you know, group shows in between. Um, and the career spanned for 10 years. Wow, well, Berlin, yeah. Japan, well, that sounds very impressive. Yeah, yeah, it was fun. I have catalogs published and um, I was in, you know, in, I'm in some very nice collections oh, okay. here in New York and abroad. Okay, yeah. were you uh, active physically or doing your uh, artist career, artistic career? Always, always been active, yes, and I um, actually started running when I moved to New York um, as a young woman in my early 20s while After I was school. still in school. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I continued to swim, but re what really drove me was um, to triathlon actually was a desire to get out of my studio. So I was spending a lot of time alone in the studio, uh, you know, producing work. And um, I was a member of Chelsea Piers over here on the west side. And um, I, I joined the triathlon team there. And I started out uh, with Olympic distance triathlon. Um, well, sprint and then uh, Olympic. Mm -hmm. um, that's the longest race, I, race distance I've done in tri. But, um, I I raced uh, for about uh, six years, mostly triathlon, uh -huh. and then um, gradually made a transition away from art more towards sports. Sports. Back to sports, yeah. <laughs> it's always been both. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But now you're more into the sports world. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I The more I learned about exercise science, the more interested I became. Um, so I started reading a lot of books about training, and then eventually, um, it was around 2008 that I made, uh, decided to get professional credentials, and I got my personal training certification and um, ACSM, and then I started uh, at Equinox the same year. Oh, that's a great As club. A, yeah, I love Equinox. Yeah, I'm a um, current <laughs> member, and I know they all the trainers get excellent training. They do. Yes, they set the bar. Uh, and they had separate levels, level zero to four, something like that. Yes, <laughs> and I actually fell into a niche coaching runners while I was there. Mm -hmm. So it was not it was not my intention. I um, I was happened to be the only uh, endurance based trainer on uh -huh. staff who had the endurance experience and my coach or my personal training manager Rich Velasquez 
who is still with Equinox, um, is a uh, he's an elite runner with he runs with the front runners. He's like a 240 marathoner. He gave me all the marathon uh, customers. Uh -huh. So all uh, the first my first year in fitness, I had um, six clients in the New York City Marathon. So we did you know strength training, power training. Uh, prehab, you know, in injury prevention, and I wrote their programs for them. Excellent. So mostly so. indoors or a combination of indoors, outdoors? We did um, indoor indoor training, and then I would write their program for what they were going to, you know, their outdoor runs. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, so a lot of work on the treadmill. <laughs> yes, we did a lot of work on the treadmill, actually, oh. yes, because I, you know, wanted them to get their speed training in because right, I knew they right. weren't doing it on their own. Oh, that's so we do right. it during their session. Um, oh. Yeah. So that was good training because because of what you're doing now. Oh, absolutely. So um, after Equinox, uh, I had several private clients, so I continued to coach them, mostly runners, and then um, I started outdoor runs, group runs in the park. Um, and after that, I also worked, simultaneously worked at a boutique facility uptown called La Palestra, which um, is, a, it's a fantastic mm -hmm. gym and uh, started by, Pat, founded by Pat Minocchio, mm -hmm. and he's a big fan of Romanoff. Oh. So they, yeah, they teach. Dr. Romanoff. Dr. Romanoff. Yeah, oh. it's kind of a running gym. Like they, they have a very well-known marathon training program, mm -hmm. um, and a lot of celebrities go there. So, like for instance, I think David Lynch ran the marathon with them one year. Oh, excellent! <laughs> then I was independent, uh, and for about three years, and uh, mostly still working with runners. I was running at the track on the Lower East Side with them, meeting runners in the park, uh -huh. uh, did a lot of running with my clients, because yeah. um, that's what they wanted. And then, um, you know, simultaneously started developing this idea for Mile High Run Club, because I was having, I was struggling leading uh, the group runs outdoors, because I had so many different fitness levels. Mm -hmm. and. It was too small. The group was too small to hire pacers. Yeah, yeah. So, and I actually lost someone when I, when I was on a, on a run around the lower loop. Oh, you mean they a, fell far behind? Yeah. Oh, that's embarrassing. <laughs> it's embarrassing. It made me look bad. Okay. <laughs> yeah, and I, you know, I was fairly new uh -huh, to uh -huh. the outdoor thing. So, um, you know, cause, so at one point I kind of thought like, Okay, rather than get better at that, we should just move this whole operation indoors. Indoors. Okay, so that was the genesis of the Mile High Run Club. Yes. We should emphasize run. It's not the Mile High Club. It is club. the Mile High, High Run, run club. club. And you got the t-shirt to Where play. no one gets left behind. Are you ready to run? When it comes to working out in 2015, expect to do a lot of this, running on a treadmill, but in a whole new way, according to the founders of well and good. We used to think of treadmills as something you do at the gym, you stick it in your headphones and you just try to get in your 20 minutes of cardio. It's totally changed. Now we're seeing treadmills being used like spin bikes. So jump on a treadmill in a group class like those offered at Mile High Run Club. Did you run any uh, half marathons or marathons while you, before you started this? Yes, the run was a, a really strong portion of my race. I would always, you know, it's like a 7.30 pace mm -hmm. um, for the Olympic distance um, triathlon. So, um, and back then I didn't really care about my time. Okay. <laughs> I didn't know what that meant. But I was, I was pretty consistent. And um, But uh, so I signed up for uh, my first half, I think in 2010, uh -huh. maybe 2011. And um, that was the more women's half in Central Park, which I do every year. Okay. I love it. I, okay. It's just such a great race, and uh, that's where I have my half marathon PR. Okay. Current half marathon PR. Okay. Yeah. Excellent. Have you done a marathon yet? <laughs> I have. 
Yes, yeah, I did one? New York City last year. Oh, excellent. Yes. And yeah. did you enjoy it? I did. Yeah, I had a great race. Uh, uh, well, until mile twenty, it was you know <laughs> like famous uh, like a, a lot wall. of runners, right? Yeah, wall. Yeah, it's mile twenty. Okay. <laughs> I'm still working on my marathon PR, and I'd like to work up up to ultra distance. Um, and I did my first trail race this summer. Oh, excellent! Um, upstate, and that was a 15k. Totally different thing. I want to definitely do more trails. Okay. Um, I placed um, first in my age group. Oh, for the trail. and your first 15k trail. My first oh, one. excellent! Yeah. Well, that must be <laughs> high from that. <laughs> Still high. <laughs> well, was, yeah. Well, I mean, let's uh, get to the Mile High Run Club. So, how did yeah. you come with the name first? Oh, okay. Well, I wanted to emphasize the feel feel good aspect of running. And um, I think I, I don't know, I read Murakami's book, What I Talk About When I Talk About Running, you know, Haruki Murakami, and um, maybe there was a reference in there about the runner's high. I can't remember exactly, but at one point I just thought, you know, like running's always made me feel great. And, you know, um, so I wanted to emphasize that rather than the, the competitive side of okay. running. Um, and also, you know, it's a little bit of a nod to the, the sort of com the communities in Colorado, like the running communities in Colorado, which is where all the serious uh, runners train, as uh, you know, okay. like Scott Jurek. So you yeah. are the Mile High Run Club. Mile High Run Club, yeah. Okay, there's a Mile High Running Club in Colorado? <laughs> yeah, there, there are, if you Google, there are others. Oh, yeah, okay. but I, they're mostly based in, in Colorado. Okay. Yeah. Oh, excellent. Well, welcome to New York. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> so I think you started recently in November of last year. The paint is still wet, and and you still have that that new car smell to the place. <laughs> we do. Yeah, we don't even have all our branding up on the wall yet. Um, our logo is not up on the wall. Uh, we're adding that, but we haven't even been open two months. Um, today's the fifth, and on the eighth, it'll be two months. Excellent. Well, yeah. tell us about the location and what's inside. Tell us, you know, the details. Okay, so we're located in NoHo, and it's on East 4th, 28 East 4th, between Bowery and Lafayette. And uh, it, we have 30 Woodway treadmills. Um, the floor is black AstroTurf, and we also have kettlebells uh, for one class, the Dash 28. We do 10 minutes of strength and power training with kettlebells. Even mood lighting. This class is capped off with some weightlifting, rounding out the workout. You'll love the next trend. I've class. taken it a few times today, and I must admit I enjoyed each and every one of them. Now, why the Woodway? That's such a high end, and not too many people know about it. At, you know, because it's such high end. Yeah. Well, I was first introduced to the Woodway um, at La Palestra uptown. Oh, it's a boutique um, place. Yes. Yeah, and um, it's a real runner's runner's treadmill, um, and Pat has some some of the best equipment. Oh, it's all customized. Okay. Um, so uh, I, you know, once I ran on it, there was no going back. <laughs> 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 yeah, and I I kind of feel like I wouldn't really do this gym without well, that treadmill. I could imagine a business plan and investment. You went to whole nine yards of that. Yes. Well, I put together a team that put together a business plan <laughs> with me. <laughs> so I, I assembled the team, and they, you know, a couple of my partners um, are, you know, they they have more business experience. So I had a lot of help with that, and uh, and then, you know, we raised the money um, together. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I have two options in terms of uh, people can uh, sign up. You have something called the Dash. Yes. And then I think the other one's called the Distance. So what is the, uh, the Dash workout? Okay, so the Dash, uh, we start with uh, four minutes of an active dynamic warm-up off the treadmill. So that's on the floor. And then uh, we hop on the treadmill for four minutes, easy jog, and then um, 20 two minutes of interval. So total time on the treadmill um, is about 28 minutes with the walk transition. So 28 minutes on the treadmill and then back on the floor for 10 minutes of strength and power. Because I remember you have uh, a little card that has, I think, joggers on 
uh, as a menu, joggers menu and a runner's menu. Yes. So tell us about that card and how did you think of it? Yeah, so since I've been working with runners for so long, um, and one-on-one, -on -one, you know, I've, I've gotten a sense for, uh, you know, the different fitness levels, different types of runners, um, and uh, I really think most people fall in one or the other category. There's not much in between. And, um, you know, I was thinking also in terms of heart rate zones. A lot of triathletes, you know, more than runners, I think triathletes do zone training. Um, uh, and at least when, you know, when I was learning about triathlon training, that was, that was kind of the, the um, standard way of thinking mm -hmm. about training in terms of intensity levels. Mm -hmm. So, um, so I didn't want to call them heart rate zones because I didn't want to be too scientific. So we're calling them levels. And then, you know, we have the sort of beginner, you know, or the person who's coming back to running, starting up again. And then we have the, that's the jogger category. And then we have the, the racer category for more advanced and competitive runners. And our demographic really fits into one or the other. We found it's really, it really, it really works. Um, some people are off the charts. They're real, you know, they're really competitive, <laughs> really elite runners. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Um, and, you know, we've had some of them in the studio. And, you know, the high end of uh, level three, which is a threshold pace uh -huh. on for the racer, for the, for the competitive runner, yeah, yeah. based on my chart, or based on my suggested ranges, they're just suggestions, right, right. is 8.5 miles an hour on the treadmill. That's a seven minute mile outside. So I'm thinking that's threshold for a lot of people. That's pretty fast. Yeah. 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 So yeah. you know you have another gear in you, but you're at that right, right. that lactate threshold. Right. So we do a lot of level uh, level three work in the class because you know get people used to being uh, uncomfortable. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. And push that wall back. Yeah, yeah. It's I never done a spin class, but what the class your class reminded me of actually of deep water running. Oh wow! Because I'm a big because fan of that. Because they have somebody at the head of the pool. Okay. You know, uh, uh, giving commands. You know, okay, now we're going to do this. You know, with the arms, with the legs, and you do something similar. Yes. Okay, we're going to we're going to hike up the incline from one percent to three percent. Mm -hmm. Going to go one minute, then back down to your comfort zone. Yes. So uh, very much, I thought that reminded me of deep water running because it's very similar in that, in the, uh, in the command structure. So oh. I was very comfortable oh, good. doing that. Plus, yeah. as a user, you control the machine. So like you said, there were suggested options or suggested intervals. So I can go, okay, my comfort, I could have said, was 3.5. Somebody else could be 5.5. Exactly. So I, I liked all those options. Yes, yeah. It's, it's good to have a broad range. Yeah, so within each level, there, there are two points between. That's right. Yeah, That's the right. low end and the high end. So there is somebody there giving commands, but, but, but the user can now decide which levels they're comfortable with. Yes, which is so important that I, you know, fitness, as you know, it's not a fixed thing. It varies from day to day to week to week. You know, it depends on what else you've been doing, how much running you've been doing, the principle of specificity. You get what you train for. You become a better runner by running. <laughs> well, in my case, I am coming back from an injury. Oh, right. Yeah. yeah so I love exactly. the class and I love that I can warm up. You know, you have that three to four minute warm up, yes. which is very, very important. Then I can go with the faster speed you know, intervals. Yes, you want to get the joints lubricated, get the hips opened up. It's safe. It's more safe than just getting on the treadmill. Um, you know, and we have a lot of people coming after work. They've been sitting at a desk know, all day. They need I to know. fire up the glutes. Yeah, I, know. I think that's ideal because yeah. you know, if, if I go to Equinox, a lot of people they just jump on the machine and start running. Right. <laughs> yeah. And you don't. You they don't really look like they're enjoying it. No. <laughs> but you're in your classes. Everybody at the end actually enjoys it because it was that mixture. But let's talk about you also offer the the distance. And the, the distance, I believe, is entirely on the treadmill. It is, I think, one hour. It's an hour. Okay, that yeah. sounds like this is for the more serious runner or the more experienced runner. Yes, that would be for the more experienced runner, although anyone can take it, you know, just take, they could uh, go at a lower intensity, walk through the recovery. 
Um, walk, there's no shame in walking at any point during the class. Um, but we cover an average of uh, between five and seven in that class and up. There have been plenty of people. Those Nike people got over seven, well over seven. <laughs> and uh, we actually have one guy who got over eight, which is, I still don't know how he did that. But um, yeah, so the average is between five and seven. Right, well, you always kind yeah. of have those uh, exceptional people. Yeah, yeah. And I guess the Woodway, one of the advantages of Woodway, you can do four minute miles on that if, you, if you're that quick. Yeah, you could. Which is, which, is, which is a very rare thing you can do. Yeah. Plus yeah. you can do downhill racing on the Woodway. I don't know if you do downhills at all in the... We uh, don't. Not yet, anyway. No. You've only been in, in Ralph since November. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> so there's lots of opportunity to come up with new plans. I have to check the treadmill. I'm not sure if these do that, but I'll check. So walk us through. I'm going to guess Okay. Guessing. So yeah, so we don't do the, the, uh, the warm-up on the floor, the active dynamic warm-up. Um, a, a lot of runners will come to class early. They'll walk or, you know, they'll they'll get warmed up, but because it's a little bit more advanced of an athlete generally, um, you know, a, a five minute jogging warm up is adequate. Um, and then we start the, you know, we either do, it's, there's not as much sprinting in that class, because um, in more tempo style, um, you know, tempo hills, repeats. Um, I did a class with Corinne, your coach, yesterday. Um, she did 16-minute repeats at Threshold. Um, she did two five-minute hills. It was a really nice structure. I liked it a lot. I, I typically divide in my class into three portions. You can get a lot done in that long class. The duration of the work is longer, but you know, you also I have um, longer recovery as well. It's all about those balanced work to recovery ratios. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's interesting. Well, it sounds like you're off to a good start. We I mean, a lot of people go, hmm, do I really want to uh, go to a treadmill? Especially, uh, well, in the wintertime, it's a lot easier to attract people. So what do you think is going to happen when the weather turns nicer? The spring, <laughs> I mean, this is going to be your first experience. Yes, well, I, I think, you know, spring and fall are the best this is the best time of year to run outside in New York, and um, I, I don't think treadmill training is a substitute for outdoor running. Um, we're, we're starting our outdoor program actually uh, a week from Monday. Um, it's January 12th, so it is a week from today. Yeah, it's January 12th. Oh, excellent. Um, so we want to support people in their outdoor door running as well. Um, and. Um, but, you know, I think people, I mean, we'll see what happens, but I, I definitely think, um, you know, it does get a little too hot to run during the summer outside. Oh, outside. Yeah. yeah. I, 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 oh, I've indoors, it's air conditioned, right, right. Yeah, yeah. But, so, but, but the other hand, people want to go outside in the, in the summer. <laughs> yeah, well, summers, it, unless it's too hot. Oh, right, uh, it's yeah, too hot. like I, I've definitely had some session, sessions canceled with clients who didn't want to run in the heat um, ah, throughout the outside. summer. Ah. Yeah, so we, okay. we always had, you know, weather is always a factor wherever yeah, yeah. you live. It's more of a factor in New York ah. because of the extremes, obviously. But, um, but you know, we'll see what happens. I, you know, I do think um, the one reason people will come, the main reason people come back to the class during the off season, um, or you know, during the the um, the nicer weather, um, the you know, the months in New York where we have nicer weather, spring and fall, um, will be so they can get their speed training in because um, they have a race coming up um, and they don't do it alone. Okay. Um, primarily because they don't know how to structure okay, right, the intervals, right. and um, you know, and the, they want to take advantage of that the group dynamic. Yep. Right, right. How, oh, you know, it's very motivating. Excellent, and it's well, fun. Uh, it is absolutely yeah. fun. On the outdoor running, where where would they be meeting? Where you be meeting with the uh, class? That's up to our, our coach Simon oh. Durkin, um, but I think you know we'll either we'll probably meet at the studio. Okay, and then yeah, run in somewhere. NoHo. Yeah, and then the first run next week is going to be at the track actually on the east side. Okay. So east um, east. East 6th and FDR. Oh, that's right. It's a famous yeah. track. Yeah. A lot of other runners go to. Well, listen, yeah. uh, we're almost out of time, but I wanted to make sure that uh, 
we cover what are some of your personal future challenges in terms of racing. You, you've done a marathon last year. Yes. What, uh, or you want to do an ultra at some point. Is <laughs> there something in between? <laughs> <laughs> um, there's so much more I want to do. And, you know, uh, I this year... I would like to, I'm going back to the more women's half. Um, I would like to, you know, beat my PR maybe. We'll see, we'll see. Um, I, you know, I'm actually gonna train for it this time. Okay. <laughs> and then um, I, I would like to do, do another fall marathon and I would, would also like to do a longer trail race. Okay. Um, definitely wanna do more trail racing in the future. Oh, I really okay. enjoy the trails. Um, trails. Well, back so, but I was had my eye on the Marine Corps oh, Marine marathon, Corps. Oh, marathon cool. in the fall. Cool. Well, yeah. I can recommend the uh, Rand Cortland Park for trail running. Yeah. Oh, yes. That's Beautiful right. Yeah. I got to get out there. All right. Well, yeah. sounds like you've got a <laughs> very, very interesting future. <laughs> Thanks, Well. Listen, thank you so much for coming in <laughs> and sharing these stories. Okay. Thank you. <laughs>